I'm Deb and welcome to Plugged In. Plugged In is a show that's all about your health and specifically the health of your kidneys. This includes learning more about just how incredible our kidneys are and the important work that they do in keeping our body healthy. It also means learning about what is kidney disease and how to prevent it and the importance of organ donation and transplantation and so much more. So while we like to load you up with important information, we also like to have a little fun here, which is a perfect time for me do. to introduce my two <laughs> wonderful co-hosts, Daniel and William. Hello. Hello. Great to be back. How is everybody doing? Gong hei fa choi. Whatever Daniel just said. Happy New Year, right? <laughs> that is correct. January 28th, am I right? You are correct, yes. Oh. Chinese New Year traditionally is celebrated here in Canada on January 28th. But the date also follows China's lunar calendar in celebration, actually follows between January 21st and February 20th this year. Mm -hmm. We like to party and party for a long time. It sure sounds like it. So when you say you like to party, what are some of those special Chinese mm. traditions you like to do? Well, a lot of the traditions coincide with bringing families together, whether it's for family feasts, getting together and, and wearing new clothes, wearing uh -huh. lots of red. Is that a big color? Red's a huge color. Uh, families will go and watch lion dances, dragon dances, wow. and, and most importantly, oh, oh. families oh, give those. out red packet lucky money. That's you know, I like, we ain't got like the hooker, brother. How are you going to take the lucky money? I want shoes too. There's, there's so, so much to learn about Chinese New Year. Don't so we much. have a segment coming up later? We absolutely do. Uh -huh. We have a special segment in the show about Chinese New Year, so stay tuned. Oh, fantastic. Um, something else, though, that's really important mm. to note is that people of Asian descent mm -hmm. are actually at higher risk for kidney disease. Yes, it's very important to remember that. So, we mentioned at our last mm -hmm. show about different ways people can be healthier. So, this episode we wanted to share another tip, and that's to watch the salt content in your diet. Yes, uh, did you know that actually the recommended intake for, of salt in, uh, for one day is five to six grams, which is only equivalent to like what one, one teaspoon, teaspoon of salt. Yes, exactly. Now that's hardly anything. And I know I have no clue how I'm going to be able to do it. <laughs> but you know, try to limit the amount of processed uh. foods that you eat, and also, mm. you know what, for a healthier way of living, make sure that you just you know you cook with um, foods. Fresh. Yes, and, and use fresh you ingredients. Told me yes, that's I was trying to get that time. out. Well, sorry, but, <laughs> but you just told me you cook with fresh ingredients. So I that reduces yes. your. So yes, sodium. your salt intake and your sodium intake because you can season with different spices. I also want to give a plug for the Kidney Gala, which is coming up on March 9th, World Kidney Day. This is such an inspirational night to raise funds for kidney patients and research mm -hmm. to give hope for their future. So an event not to miss. For more information and tickets, go to kidneygala.com. And we've got a great show lined up for you today. So please stay, stay plugged, plugged in. in. 各位大家好,我叫Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是Terry,我是
kidney disease can put you at higher risk for developing kidney problems. As part of the team at St. Paul's Hospital, our dietitians who specialize in kidney care can help you manage your blood sugars, your blood pressure in order to help protect your kidneys. Chinese New Year can be a challenging time to eat well just because there is so much salt, there's a lot of eating out, there's a potential for overeating. And so I just want to share a few quick tips with you just to help you overcome that. Some great tips coming your way, so stay tuned. A study by the University of Illinois Chicago has found that a lack of sleep can worsen the health of people suffering with chronic kidney disease. In their study, researchers recorded the sleeping habits of over 400 patients who were wrist monitors for five to seven days over a median period of five years. Patients slept an average of 7.4 hours a night and each hour of sleep significantly lowered the risk of end-stage renal disease. The research highlights the importance of sleep on kidney function and the need to find new methods to improve the sleeping habits of people living with chronic kidney disease. In other news, bioengineers in San Francisco who are working to build artificial kidneys say the FDA have fast-tracked their development. As we know, there are hundreds of patients waiting for a kidney transplant in BC alone. So development like this would be life-changing news for those people. In case you're wondering how it works, the artificial kidney consists of two parts, the hemofilter that would perform the functions of filtration and the cell bioreactor that would perform the other biological functions. Artificial kidney would then be placed inside the body exactly the same as a regular kidney transplant. And despite being artificial, it would perform the same functions as a regular kidney. Isn't technology amazing? 你知道吗？在用餐时大量长期的摄入钠，将会增加我们患上一些慢性病的风险。这些病呢，包括高血压、慢性肾病、骨质疏松症、啊肥胖症、肾结石，甚至呢，包括癌症。盐当中的主要成
eat about 70 to 80% full instead of 100%. And enjoy your food slowly. Concentrate on spending time with your friends and family instead of just focusing on food. Um, and walk after meals to help with the digestion after a large meal. Exercise is the best free medicine to help lower your uh, blood pressure and control your blood sugars. So what's better than that? And it's also good to enjoy some fruit with your meal too. For example, these mandarin oranges are very popular during Chinese New Year. And I wanna just point out one important thing. For people who have chronic kidney disease, they need to avoid star fruit. So we don't want any of the star fruit. Studies have shown that uh, star fruit can be harmful for people who have chronic kidney disease. Stay tuned, because we've got some really delicious traditional Chinese New Year dishes coming up. Today on Hot Topics, we are going to talk about living kidney donation and how kidney patients who need a transplant get the word out to family, friends, people in their circle to let them know that they need a kidney. And again, they said it's up to you whether you tell the recipient or not, you don't have to. But I chose because it was Christmas time at that time mm -hmm. of year and I uh, phoned up Joe and Cheryl and I said, uh, Merry Christmas, here's your Christmas present, you got my wow. kidney. I don't know how you found out, Todd, from, mm -hmm. from Tanya, if you want to share. So I actually, um, uh, three months before my transplant, I had a very serious health incident. I had some seizures and I ended up in a coma for five days. And on, on day four of that coma, uh, Tanya had been sh scheduled for an appointment with BC Transplant. Mm -hmm. And every time she went for an appointment, I would pick up the phone, leave her a message and say, I'm hoping for the best, I hope it goes well today. And so that morning she saw that a voice message from my phone. And she didn't know until after her appointment where she had been told it's all good to go, um, the transplants to go. Yeah. Uh, she was leaving that appointment, picked up the voicemail, and it was my mom saying, Tanya, something's happened to Todd. And she went to, to VGH, and or sorry, she went from VGH to Royal Columbian, and at Royal Columbian, uh, I was in ICU, and she she came into my room with my mom and, and her, and, and Tanya said, um, you know, holding my hand and still in coma at this point, she said, Todd, the transplants are go. And I, uh, my mom and, and Tanya tell me that I, I physically moved one of my legs over the railing of the bed because I was ready to go have you, this transplant. You, 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 <laughs> right you were now. ready to roll. I was ready to roll. I was, I was ready to have this transplant. Wow. Um, and she said at that time, uh, the other thing that happened when she, they told me, still in the coma, was uh, she said there was a, a single tear that came down my eye. So it was, uh, as much as I was in a coma, I was uh, very much aware of what had been said and what I had been told. Um, and then, fortunately, three months later, the transplant went ahead. The transplant went ahead. Now, Sheila, you were saying it's interesting because you, you gave um, the call. You called right. on Christmas Eve. Right. And then it was several years later, though, that the, the transplant actually took place. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it was... Um, Joe is an amazing and took such good care of himself uh, physically and, and uh, uh, through diet that uh, his kidneys went on for another almost four years after uh, we had gone through that initial testing. So, so we had a, a bit of a sabbatical there where we waited um, and then finally when his kidneys did fail then uh, I got the call about a month ahead of time and, and said it looks like it's going to be soon. Sheila, you've brought in a, a beautiful box here. Do mm -hmm. you want to Tell us a little bit about what this is. Well, it was the, the day before uh, we went in to uh, have the transplant. Um, Joe and Cheryl gave me this, this box, and it's a memory box, and, and it contains all kinds of things that are, uh, circulate around, around the kidney transplant. And they had the inscription on the front of the box that says the memory box cost $50. The hospital PJs that they included for me uh, cost $30, and they said she Sheila's kidney is priceless. And it uh, marks the day wow. that uh, uh, we had the transplant. So, so that was um, very, very special. And then Joe brought this to the hospital um, after, uh, or on the day of uh, uh, the, the transplant. And this was a, a trophy he had inscribed for me. And this was extremely special because Joe was a real quiet guy who couldn't even talk about uh, his, his kidney um, uh, need for a kidney or anything else. And so for him to do something so public and, and uh, to present this to me was uh, really wow. touched me. 
Todd, you were also mentioning that your partner is, um, he's a musician and he is working on something pretty special for your donor as well. Yeah, and Kevin, um, as I said, you know, that night that we got engaged, his thank you to Tanya was that, that phone call, but he's a musician, so he's, you know, thinking and pondering uh, a song for her. Um, and I think as much as Kevin's working on this song, and it will be beautiful, I'm sure, um, the ultimate gift back to her is to live a life that's worthy of that gift. For sure. Thank you both so much for joining us here today. Thanks again for having it's us. Wonderful to have you both in the studio. And um, for anyone wanting more information on how to be a living donor or um, how to find a living donor, you can go to kidney.bc.ca or transplant.bc.ca. Hey everyone, welcome to the first kidney contest of 2017. My partner in crime on the show today is a familiar face here on Plugged In, our community calendar reporter, Kayla Wallace. Welcome, Kayla. Thanks, Daniel. So great to be here. You know I've been watching the Kidney Contest segment each episode on Plugged In, and there's always something fun in store for our viewers, but do you know what my favorite part of the segment is? Finding out who the winner was from the previous kidney contest. <laughs> yes, mine too. Well, since you mentioned it, Kayla, will you do the honors and announce our last contest winner? Phew, I thought you'd never ask. Well, on our kidney holiday show, we asked the question, what chronic disease is the leading cause of kidney disease? The correct answer was... Diabetes. The first person to send in the correct answer was... Drum roll, please. Jeff from Courtney. Congratulations, Jeff. Yes, congratulations. The scrumptious holiday goodies basket from Posh Pantry is on its way to you, along with one of our signature plugged-in coffee mugs. Okay, everyone, are you ready for this week's kidney contest question? On our kidney holiday special, we were all very busy cooking up some quick and easy and kidney-friendly recipes for dishes you could whip up over the holiday season. Our recipes were courtesy of a kidney foundation initiative that we offer on our website that is a great resource for kidney patients looking for kidney-friendly recipes, meal plans, and kidney diet information. It also has great general information about healthy eating tips for everyone. What is the name of this initiative? Or can you tell us the name of this website? Be the first to send in your correct answer to win. What are they going to win this time, Kayla? Well, we will be sending the lucky winner, one of our official plugged in coffee mugs, a $50 Visa gift card, and a $50 iTunes gift card. Wow, that is a great prize package, perfect to kick off a new year. So tweet us your answer at hashtag kidney contest. Or send us your answer via email at pluggedin at kidney.bc.ca. Good, Good luck. luck! So there are some traditional Chinese New Year dishes that we have every year. One of them is a radish cake which represents good luck and it has different ingredients in there like white radish, some green onions, some Chinese sausage, some mushrooms, some dried scallops. And so you can have it pan fried or you can have it steamed, both delicious. The steam version would be a better choice and if you wanted to reduce the amount of sodium in it, you can reduce the amount of Chinese sausage in there. You can also dip it in some garlic chili sauce or some low sodium soy sauce just to help lower the sodium content. The next dish that we have here, we have some steamed chicken. And to reduce the amount of saturated fat in it, you can either remove the skin completely or just eat part of it. You can dip it into some really nice flavorful ginger scallion dip that we have there. It adds a lot of flavor without the salt. You can easily make that at home in your food processor. So we know this is Patrick's favorite and we eat the fish because it symbolizes increasing prosperity. And we have the soy sauce here on the side. Uh, why we've done that is so that we can control how much salt that we add to the fish. 
Something that you can do at home is mixing soy sauce, low sodium soy sauce, with some low sodium chicken broth and also combining that with some scallions, some ginger, some cilantro to just add that extra flavor to this beautiful fish. So we've got the Buddha's Delight here where it has a variety of different dishes and for Chinese New Year because the focus is on a lot of meat, a lot of protein, it's really important to include some vegetables within your dish to add some vitamins, some minerals, some antioxidants. And this particular dish, uh, sometimes it has mushrooms and it has different vegetables, it has bamboo shoots, pea shoots, and what's great about it, it has different ingredients that symbolize different things. So for example, it has the sea moss in here and um, this is really delicious. It absorbs a lot of flavor and this symbolizes wealth. Sometimes it has rice noodles in there that represents longevity, lily buds in there that represents living in harmony. So a very meaningful dish. This here we also have some oyster mushrooms and some romaine lettuce put together. Another easy way that you can add some more vegetables into your Chinese New Year. One thing I want to point out is that many dishes can be made with things such as dried scallops or dried mussels and dried shrimp. These are very flavorful, but also a source of hidden salt. So you can use it sparingly and you don't need a lot of it to bring that flavor through to your dish. After the large Chinese dinner, typically there are about four different desserts that come up. Sometimes mango pudding, almond cookies, you have red bean soup, and you have this really special dish here where you have these sweet rice dumplings uh, in a ginger sweet soup. And inside the dumplings there can be different types of fillings inside. Sometimes it's sesame, black sesame, sometimes it is that red bean mixture, all delicious. After a large Chinese dinner, you likely don't need to have all four different desserts, but you can choose your favorite one, savor it, enjoy it, and aim for smaller portions. So there is no one diet that fits all for people who have chronic kidney disease. Some people might need to restrict their potassium or phosphorus, but it really depends on what your blood test results say. Talk to your family doctor or talk to your doctor to get referred to a dietitian, because a dietitian can help you design an individualized way of eating to help you manage your chronic kidney disease. I hope some of these tips have been helpful to enjoy your Chinese New Year while still taking care of your health. Hi, I'm Kayla with Community Calendar. On Saturday, February 4th, 2017, the Kidney Foundation of Canada, BC and Yukon branch is hosting a special event. We are inviting anyone who has both diabetes and kidney disease to participate. The event will be held downtown Vancouver from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. Dr. Melanie Brown, nephrologist, will speak, as will an individual with both diabetes and kidney disease. It will be a chance for participants to tell their story and to seek support and encouragement from others who are trying to manage both conditions. The nephrologist will be on hand to answer questions. The event is free, but you must register in advance. Please contact Heather Johnson for more information or to register for this event. Kidney Health Month and our annual March Drive door-to-door -door campaign is just around the corner. If you would like to join the thousands of volunteers this March canvassing their neighborhoods, families, and friends, please contact Marie Hess. We'll be more than happy to make the arrangements to get you started. Join us Thursday, March 9th, 2017, World Kidney Day at the Fairmont Hotel Vancouver to celebrate the fifth annual Kidney Gala. Last year, tickets to attend the gala sold out, and thanks to our guests and sponsors, we raised a record-breaking $230,000. The Kidney Gala brings attention to kidney disease, the people it affects, the people who care for them, and those who are doing research to help prevent, treat, and even one day find a cure for this serious disease. Get your tickets now. The Kidney Gala will feature incredible live and silent auction items and packages. One of the spectacular packages is a wondrous West Coast adventure. This fabulous package includes a four-night stay in a deluxe one-bedroom suite with a relaxing outdoor jacuzzi tub at the Peaceful Harbor Suites in Euculid. It's a breathtaking property with stunning surroundings, including visits from the local wildlife, and access to both the serene Euculet Inlet and the active marina from every suite. The Wondrous Adventure also includes a tour of your choice with subtitle adventures, whether it's bear or whale watching, a sunset cruise, or touring the nearby islands, you get to pick which type of boat suits your adventure. 
a former Canadian Coast Guard, or maybe the Fast and Fun Zodiac. This is one adventure you do not want to miss. Check the gala website often for updates on what you could see at the auction. I'm Kayla Wallace reporting for Community Calendar, wishing you a happy Chinese New Year. Gang Hei Fat Choi! And that wraps up this episode of Plugged In. And a very special thanks to all our guests who joined us today here in studio. And thank you for tuning in. So what did you think of today's episode? Let us know via Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also email us at pluggedin at kidney.bc.ca. Oh, and a very special shout out to the Kidney Car, one of our sponsors. And I want to leave you with one last thought today. Although 90% of British Columbians are in favor of organ donation, to date, only 20% are registered. So help us move this needle forward and register your wishes for organ donation. It only takes two minutes of your time. You can just go to kidney.bc.ca and click on the register button. And also remember that heroes aren't born, they're registered. So thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Plug In. in. Gung Hei Fa Choi. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> can I try it? Yes, of course you can try it. <laughs> well, finger. Your finger, finger. Yeah. Oh uh, no. no, no. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Hey yo, man, your budget's a little slim right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs>